That's right, folks. It's History's Pitchman, 80s of Cool, and today we have a very special episode of History's Pitchman Mysteries, where we are going to attempt to shed some light on Indiana University's greatest unsolved mysteries, the 2011 disappearance of 20-year-old IU student Lauren Spearer. seem to get enough of these history pitch man videos go ahead and hit that youtube subscribe button and go ahead and leave a comment so just who was lauren spear well in the summer of 2011 she was a bright beautiful 20 year old apparel design major from scarsdale new york now classes had just let out from indiana university and she was looking forward to a few weeks here on campus before returning to scarsdale new york for the rest of the summer. Let me go ahead and set the stage for you. The year was 2011, the month was June. After a seemingly routine night on the town, Indiana University sophomore Lauren Spear disappeared from these streets right here on College Avenue on the edge of Indiana University's Bloomington campus. And folks, Lauren was never seen or heard from again. All right, let's take a look at the events that led up to the disappearance of Lauren Spear. At the time, she was living right here at the Avenue Apartments on College Avenue. It was called Smallwood at the time. She left shortly after midnight. Folks, we have this on videotape. We know she departed after midnight for what was gonna be a night-long hard party with a bunch of her rowdy friends. And after a two minute walk, Lauren arrives here at the apartments of Jay Rosenbaum, five north on the corner of 11th and College. Let's go ahead and get a look at Mr. Rosenbaum. There I can see, you can see he has on his favorite party shirt, it looks like. Here Lauren has a couple pre-flight drinks. That's what the college kids call having some drinks before you go drinking, I suppose. More on Rosenbaum in a minute. Okay, now. Once the pre-flight drinks were done, Lauren Spear and Corey headed right here to Kilroy's on Walnut, one block over from where they were at the apartments. Now this is a well-known party spot, known simply as Sporties back then and Sporties to this day. Camera footage shows them coming in at 1.30. Now they exit at 2.30, both of them exit at 2.30 and the camera footage shows them staggering, stumbling. Apparently they were quite a pair. According to roommate Mike Beth, Lauren and Corey Rossman arrived back here where the whole party started at 5 North, right on 11th and College. They go to Rossman's apartment where Rossman, the party boy, proceeds to barf all over the stairs and then pass out. Now, Lauren goes back to, you guessed it, Jay Rosenbaum, where apparently the party was still rolling strong. Okay, folks, now this next part is pivotal here. At 4.30 in the morning, Jay Rosenbaum says from one of these balconies up here, he sees Lauren Spear leaving, coming down to these streets. Now, the only evidence that we have that she left the apartment was Rosenbaum's statement. Now, he passed a lie detector on this according to his lawyer. Now, a few minutes later, Lauren did not arrive at her apartment from these streets right here. Lauren was gone. The next morning, folks, everyone was frantic. Nobody could find Lauren. By mid-afternoon, her friends and family knew there was something very wrong. Her parents flew in from New York, and there was a massive media campaign. There was a feature on America's Most Wanted on Unsolved Mysteries. For weeks, there were billboards, posters, and there was nothing after weeks of a massive nationwide and local search Lauren Spear folks was simply gone it's been over a decade folks since Lauren Spear disappeared from Indiana University Bloomington Indiana and theories on what happened to her range from the well the practical to the preposterous NBC's Dateline has done a feature story on her Lauren Spears' parents hired private eye Bo Deedle to look into it. 
Bo Deedles had harsh words for the Bloomington police. He also said that Lauren's friends weren't too overly cooperative, but I have come up with three main theories and hopefully we can shed some light on this baffling mystery of what happened to 20 year old Lauren Spear over a decade ago. All right, let's take a look at theory number one. We'll call this our Three Stooges theory. Why the Three Stooges theory? Because these three guys that Lauren was hanging around with that night could aptly be called the Three Stooges. It was Mike Beth, Corey Rossman, and Jay Rosenbaum. Make no mistake about it, folks. These guys are not monks. They were ready to party. Now, we know that Lauren was at Jay Rosenbaum's apartment at 4.30 in the morning. The only evidence we have, the only evidence we have, folks, that she ever left that apartment is Rosenbaum's testimony. This was not caught on camera. It was not caught on camera. Now, Rosenbaum's lawyer says he passed the lie detector test. Rosenbaum did lawyer up, but if you're at the center of some kind of murder investigation, anybody is gonna seek counsel. Now, is this a little bit suspicious? Hmm. Maybe. Okay, let's take a look at this Jay Rosenbaum character. There's a striking portrait of our young hero. Now, the evidence that we have that Lauren ever left his apartment at four in the morning is his testimony. This was not caught on camera. This looks suspicious. Now, he lawyered up, but if you're at the center of this massive investigation, anybody is gonna seek counsel. His lawyer says he passed a lie detector. So that's our look at Jay Rosenbaum. Suspicious? Mm, maybe. So did these guys do it? No. Is there any chance that these bumbling, vomiting, partying college boys somehow killed her, disposed of a body, launched a big cover-up, kept their big mouth shut? No. It just couldn't happen. These guys had Jaeger bombs and Budweiser on their mind, not heinous murder in a cover-up. Theory number one, the Three Stooges theory. Her friends did it. No. My second theory, folks. Stranger abduction. Theory number two. We've all seen the newsreels where some Ted Bundy-type serial killer happens to be coming through town, a crime of opportunity. They see Lauren alone, intoxicated, the middle of the night, crime of opportunity, and they snatch her. I suppose anything is possible, but that's a one in a million happenstance. Stranger abduction, folks, the odds are prohibitive. It just did not happen. Theory number two, stranger abduction, no. Which brings us to theory number three. Now get a load of this one, folks. Just four years after Lauren Spear disappears, another IU college student named Hannah Wilson was found tragically murdered on the edge of town. Now the circumstances between her abduction and Lauren Spear's disappearance are uncannily similar. They were at the same bar. It was in the same neighborhood. So let's take a real close look at the Hannah Wilson murder case and the man who was convicted of this awful murder, a monster named Dan Messel. This Dan Messel is a bastard of the first order. He was convicted of murdering Hannah Wilson Four years after Lawrence Spear disappeared, he left his cell phone next to her dead body and her blood was all over his car. This guy was also convicted of beating up his grandmother. He was known to circle the neighborhoods of downtown Bloomington from where Lauren disappeared. The women around town called him the creeper because he was always around. So let's take a look at what we have as Dan Messel as our perp. Okay. He's a lifelong Bloomington resident with knowledge of the extensive downtown bar and party scene. He has a history of murder and kidnapping from that exact same neighborhood where Lauren disappeared from. And he also has extensive knowledge of the rural areas of Southern Indiana, which would be ideal for hiding evidence or a body. So let's bring this all together and let's take a good look at our three theories. Now, theory number one, the
the friends did it. Now, this band of college party and buffoons, folks, they're not capable of some kind of heinous murder, some big cover up, some big conspiracy, and then keeping their mouths shut. Did Lauren Spears' friends do it? Are they responsible for her mysterious disappearance? No. Strike theory number one. Theory number two, the random killer, the Ted Bundy type. Is it possible? I suppose anything's possible, but the odds are just one in a million against it, folks. The random killer theory, let's go ahead and strike that one. It wasn't theory number two, which leaves us with number three. This monster, this proven criminal named Dan Messel. Bingo. In my opinion, that's exactly what happened. Dan Messel is responsible for the disappearance of Lauren Spear. Now, just seconds, just seconds after Jay Rosenbaum lost sight of Lauren, she's spotted by Messel, this proven criminal, this diabolical arch-villain abducts her. He's 200 pounds, she's 100 pounds, she's intoxicated. He abducts her, but why was a body never recovered? Well, I'll tell you, the outskirts of Bloomington, the edges of Indiana University, folks, it's all rural. You could easily throw a body over a guardrail down a ravine that would never be seen again. And in all likelihood, folks, Lauren Spear was dead before anybody even realized she was missing. And what do you think happened to Lauren Spear? Go ahead and leave a comment in the section below. And go ahead and hit that YouTube subscribe button if you like these History's Pitchman Mysteries videos. Hey, this is History's Pitchman 80's Akula coming to you from the heartland, Bloomington, Indiana. And if you can't seem to get enough of these History Pitchman videos, go ahead and hit that YouTube subscribe button and go ahead and leave a comment.